Eric Trump's wife saying like, oh, we have something for you. They were going to pay her to sit at home and just not say anything. Like, it was like she worked for WCW or something. Oh, my God. <clears throat> uh, I wonder what other tapes she has. Could, she, could that be Michael Avenatti's DVD? What you never know tapes? about it. What other tapes does she of everyone, not even just Trump, everyone in that administration. <laughs> and the funny thing is, if you remember the news reports from like early 2017, it said like a lot of people didn't trust her because they thought she might be taping things. And it turned out she was <laughs> taping everything. <laughs> hey, you know, and, and, and there was a story. I think it was Sean Stajak. And, and he was, I liked He was a oh, nice yeah. kid. But he was a nice – well, and see, this is how things get blown up. He was a nice kid. His father was a big star, Stan the Man Stajak, and he had come along a little bit later, and he wanted to follow in his father's footsteps, a great physical specimen, great athlete. Uh, but he was one of those guys he overanalyzed shit, and I think he was insecure about the, the wrestling business. He's since gone on to become a successful doctor from what I understand, and, and I'm proud of him for that. Does he still have the rug? But well, and, and he he was he was insecure about his thinning hair and about his, his ability in the wrestling business and about whether people liked him or his put one of those type of people that overanalyzed a lot, and they ended up he got a lot of heat with the boys because they said he was taping the locker room conversations, and I, it wasn't long after that 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 he was let go. But I th- honestly think what it was in that instance was. He had was one of those kind of guys where he'd probably was on the road and traveling with guys and sitting in the hotel room at night and wondering what they were saying about him and they wondering whether they were winding him up or whether they were telling the truth. Or are they knocking me behind my back? And I think he he put his tape recorder in his bag and fucking walked off to see if people would talk bad about him after he left. And that, I think they caught him. They caught the tape recorder running in his bag, and then so he was done from then on. But it's just simple shit like that. But this is obviously Amorosa is more. Uh, what's the word I'm searching for? It, it's obviously more of uh, uh, um, help me. Yeah, I don't know. You know, her get her taping it, it, getting fired by John Kelly in a situation where it would be like Sean Stasiak taping Vince McMahon firing him and Linda's vanity. Well, yeah, but I mean, this is a more egregious example of just taping people, obviously, for personal gain because you knew she was going to fucking use it at some point. I had to wait till she finished the book. But uh, but it, it, this will be interesting. Uh, anyway, should we go to our main event of the day? We they've should. done it again. <laughs> Fuck all in. We've, they've beat it. They haven't even had the all in show yet, and they've beat it. Uh, and I say they because it's 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 the same group of of people. It's Ring of Honor, and and this time New Japan's involved with the Garden, but Ring of Honor and Cody and the Bucks and and the 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 indie movement. Uh, but now they've sold out Madison Square Garden. What eight months in advance? Is it nine months? Something. And in, in, and and they didn't actually do it in one day because they had the Honor Club members that got first access, and then the, and so then general public got it. The rest of it in, in whatever long. But still, the point is, and here's where everybody thinks Cornette's going to take the piss out of it. No, congratulations. Not only congratulations, and 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 plus and. Kerry Silken deserves it more than anybody because uh, the, his boyhood dream will come true, that he created something and fostered something that, that runs Madison Square Garden. So I, I'm happy for him and for all the guys that have been there since the start of the Sinclair era, especially if there, there's a few left that, that deserve it. Um, I didn't mean a few that deserve it. I mean, there's a few left of those folks that deserve it. Um, and, but it... <laughs> It's a. It's go, hopefully going to be a blue wave in November, but it's a wrestling wave this year. Once again, I'm not taking the piss out of this accomplishment because nobody else has done it, and nobody else had Sinclair Broadcast legal team talking to the Garden to do it. But this is a, again an even more extreme a backlash against the WWE motherfuckers. You think you own this whole thing from the fans and the wrestlers? They're all getting together and working on the same side, which is good. But this is, a lot of these people are doing this because this is history, because the time has come where they've had the Popeye cartoon moment. I've had all I can stands, I can't stands no more. And they're telling the WWE that they don't own wrestling when they pretty much uh, do own wrestling, but uh, maybe not for long. Uh, so it, it, it's just, it's amazing 
that all these pieces are falling into the right place, and it couldn't have happened. It couldn't happen without Sinclair Broadcasting's backing of Ring of Honor finally financially, and we'll talk more about that here in a little while. It couldn't happen if everybody was pleased with the WWE product, either Madison Square Garden for not giving them dates, or the fans for in these record numbers saying no, we want something else, and we want these guys to succeed. Have you? Has there ever been a point in time? In hi- even ECW, they would have they'd still be in business. Their fans were loyal, but there weren't enough of them. If and, and even with Paul Lee not being the best businessman in the world, um, has there ever been a time in wrestling where the fans wanted one promotion not to succeed and would support the other ones so that they didn't have a monopoly? It's never it's never been this way before. No, but I don't think that's the only reason people are supporting independent well, wrestling. No, no, they but. It, the uh, well, the idea of independent wrestling, and I mean, there's good and bad, and not every company could, no other company could do this, but a lot of this is the the backlash that's been whipped up amongst the fans of being complacent with the WWE product, them not giving them what they want to see, them owning things by such a remarkable margin, because the same thing I said about All In. The same wrestlers wrestle on shows everywhere and don't do anywhere near this business. They have been able to make these shows, and it's a great promotional tool. They've been able to make these shows historic enough in such a way that either the the boys are benefiting or the the struggling second-place promotion, Ring of Honor, is benefiting. It's making history where it's an event and people need to be a part of it. Even if they can't even go, I think some of them are buying the general admission tickets just because they want to frame them. It's fucking brilliant. You can't tell me. Ring of Honor until last year had not drawn more than 6,000 people. Nobody had drawn 10,000 in however many years we we figured out here a few months ago or on the show. But these are th- these events are being marketed, but they don't even know who's going to be in Madison Square Garden. Omega and the Bucks contracts are up. If they're smart, they'll be there. I'm sure Vince would love to snatch him up just to, well, if he gives them enough money, especially the Bucks, to just say, fuck it for the rest of their life. I can see him doing that just to get it to go away. But still, the concept, Ring of Honor is not going to go away. New Japan's not going to go away. The, the idea of supporting something else so there'll be some kind of opposition and competition isn't going to go away. So I don't think anybody is going to be mad. Well, I'm sure some will, but it's not going to kill the show if Kenny Omega or the Young Bucks or any individual talents are not on the Madison Square Garden show, is it? Depends. I mean, is Okada on the show? Because obviously that's a big one. You want to make sure you get some of the top guys. Well, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're not going to sign Okada away from New Japan just keep him from coming to Madison Square Garden when he makes however much he's their highest paid guy and probably doesn't want to leave. And you can't tell me that New Japan's not going to send Okada to fucking headline goddamn sold out Madison Square Garden. If you were in the position of one of the top line independent wrestlers today, let's say someone the caliber of the Young Bucks, a Kenny Omega, guys who, despite whatever you think of them or their work, guys who are able to make a living, guys who are able to etch out something of their own, they have their own merchandise, they control their own dates, they have Japan, they're making money. What would you do if the WWE comes and says, we want to bring you in? Let's say they say, well, you'll bypass NXT. We'll put you right on the main roster. But again, you, you know, all of a sudden you can't play to the crowd. All of a sudden you have to change what you do. Wait until there's a conversation about a super kick. You know, you, hey, don't do it so much. <laughs> Things will change. What do you do? If you control your destiny right now, this point in history, and you see the trajectory of where things are going, do you ride it? Do you try to ride the wave further without going there? Or do you cash out? Uh, well, I mean, you know, once again, that's all hypothetical. And at, at this point in time now, I'm doing exactly that. I don't work for anybody. And I'm making more money than I did for Ring of Honor or anybody else, TNA, et cetera. Then I wouldn't change this. But if I was, you know, 30 and I was convinced that I could be a main event guy going in, understanding the fucking pitfalls, like I said, they may use, I've said this before, they might use Omega. I, the Omega, it, it would be his personality that would be his to lose. His personality may not take it the WWE roster or, you know, family universe. Um, But physically, they would use him. The Young Bucks, if they said the first time Vince saw them, what the fuck? No, they'd just be cashing in, taking the money. Uh, Because they would not be, I don't think, used at at a high level. 
Um, so it just depends on who it is. But no, I, th- I think there is – I've always said there's something to be said about doing your own thing if there's a place for you to do your own thing. And now there is. Um, I still wish many more of them took it a whole lot seriously, and it, the whole I'm kind of over the whole thing because – at this point, nobody's ever going to buy any kind of wrestling as real or legitimate, and that was the only fun for me. But, but yeah, I can see, you know, there's there's becoming an audience, not only for this type of thing, but also there's becoming a the bigger subculture of people who say, no, we don't want the the the, the McDonald's of the wrestling world. We want the the cool in, uh, uh, and it can't be that the cool indie can't be, you know, the fucking barn in Salvisa, Kentucky. But yes, Ring of Honor and New Japan together can kind of be the cool, I want to say underground, not even indie, because it's 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 not I told the guys when we first sold to Sinclair, it, you're not indie wrestling, you're Ring of Honor. They need to have their own identity, but Ring of Honor is newer and fresher and more underground, but at the same time appeals to the younger audience, etc. And that's what they try to do with NXT, and I and they probably actually take the business a whole lot more seriously in NXT. But everybody also knows that NXT is another word for WWE. So <laughs> and they don't have to pay attention to the P&L also. Well, there you go. All these initials. Uh, but here's the thing. Um, congratulations to Ring of Honor, like I said, to Kerry, and to, and to all those guys, none of whom I've had personal disagreements with. They can all blow me. But no, to all the guys who, who deserve to work in Madison Square Garden, here's a free piece of advice. If they've sold out now, I'd cut the stage down. I'd make sure they had a couple of big screens and looked as professional as they could, but I would try to design it so you could get every extra person in that building. And because that's going to be your 93,173 for a long time. And then I would rent the Paramount, I guess they call it now, next door. And I'd announce, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have uh, 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 two hours before bell time at the Paramount. We're going to have three or four live matches and a pregame interview uh, show for the big event in Madison Square Garden. And you can be here live and see that and then watch the big event on the big screen. And I bet you they'd sell out again and that they could add that to the total because what they're doing now is – they're getting that big number for Sinclair Broadcasting's uh, not only their upper echelon, but also for potential people to to make it bigger. Sponsors, uh, sponsors across the breadth of the TV platform, not just local, you know, rental places or whatever. If they've got a product that they have have sold out in Madison Square Garden and turned the people away from the Paramount for next door, et cetera, et cetera, that's more valuable in that than terms of, of money itself. And, and they're close enough doing it. I'd get every single motherfucker I pro- possibly could in those doors in that complex and uh, and make a big as, a deal out of it as possible. And I, the reason I want to talk about this today, because and you saw it also, Mike Johnson had done a column on PW Insider, the one person to thank for Ring of Honor selling out <laughs> Madison Square Garden. And people started tweeting that at me. I'm like, oh, that... that because now, now, once again, people who don't know the punchline here are going to think, now Cornette's going to blow himself. But you read, it was the story of the fact that Kerry was about to close down the night in New York in September, I believe, of 2009, when Brian Danielson and Nigel McGinnis were both leaving to go to New York. Uh, he was going to close down. They they had the HD Net TV show, but it wasn't making him any extra income. They, he was going to shut down. And just... The week before that, uh, I had got fired from TNA, and Kerry called me, and and I'll tell this story in a second. But anyway, it tells that story and how that we tried to find people and finally did find people with contacts, etc., and got involved with Joe at Sinclair and sold the company. And the punchline is, so ladies and gentlemen, the person to thank for Ring of Honor selling out Madison Square Garden is Dixie Carter. Because if Dixie, basically, I'm paraphrasing this, I'm not reading it, but Dixie wasn't so fucking stupid when she got sideways with Jeff and sent him home over that issue. If she hadn't listened to that fucking idiot Vince Russo and instead had listened to the people that Jeff put in place that could run the company, uh, then I wouldn't have gone to Ring of Honor. They wouldn't have got hooked up with fucking Sinclair Broadcasting, etc., etc. So Dixie Carter did all you wrestling fans a favor. 
And it's one, and the closing line was classic. It's wonderful that she finally had the success she dreamed of in wrestling, just not with the company she actually owned. <laughs>